السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the Qur'an, to bless us with its learning and teaching. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it the light of our hearts and to make it the spring of our comfort. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove our obstacles and hurdles in life by the barakah that is found in the Qur'an, by the following of the teachings uh, that have been taught to us of the Qur'an through the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, yesterday we completed the daily tafsir of Surah Al-Mulk, the 67th chapter of the Qur'an. And uh, today we're going to begin a new chapter, the 31st chapter of the Qur'an, which is Surah Luqman. Now, Surah Luqman is a wonderful, wonderful surah. It takes its name from um, an individual, a historical uh, historical individual who lived before the Prophet wasallam, who was known to the Arabs, who was known within Arabia as a person of wisdom and hikmah. Uh, and, uh, you know, you see that the underlying current of the surah speaks about knowledge and speaks about the application of knowledge in the right capacity, in the right place. And the concept of hikmah is putting everything in its right place and abstaining from putting things in the wrong place or burdening people with the wrong efforts or the wrong duties or the wrong obligations that they're unable to maintain. Luqman السلام, uh, was a legendary f- uh, figure. He was like a mystical figure before the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu And, uh, you know, there's poetry, pre-Islamic poetry written about him uh, by Zayd ibn Mu'ayyah, who's better known as a Nabigha. He was a poet. That was his, um, uh, you know, uh, pen name. And, uh, you know, it extols virtue on who he was. And there's lots of hikam that are attributed to Luqman a.s. Uh, but we're going to look at Luqman from the context of the Qur'an. He was not a prophet of Allah. He is one who is known historically after the time of Jesus a.s. And therefore we know that Luqman isn't a prophet or a messenger because from the authentic hadith of the Prophet a.s. As is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet a.s. said, لَيْسَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ ابْنِ مَرْيَمْ Nabi, there is no prophet or messenger that came between me and Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Luqman was a slave. He was a person who was enslaved and he was a person of uh, dark complexion. He was a black man and he was a person who was owned by others, but he never was held captive by others. The only captivity he had was to his maker, his creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll talk more about Luqman as we proceed, as we get to the verses that begin with his advice to his son and others, insha'Allah. But today we begin with the surah. It's a Meccan surah revealed in Meccan Mukarrama, in the middle part of Meccan Mukarrama, and it's at a time of the persecution of the believers before it got really severe, but it's at a time where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in need of counsel and in need of uh, divine uh, inspiration from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and for his Sahaba to see that there were people who came before them who had to sacrifice many, many things to achieve the greatness and the glory of righteousness that leads to protection and safety on the day. It truly matters, the day of judgment. May Allah give us safety and security on that day. Allahumma ameen. So we begin uh, after al-isti'adha. And we said, you know, when we began discussing our daily tafsir for Surah Al-Mulk, whenever you begin the reading of the Qur'an, we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Most High to protect us from the accursed shaitan. And the reason is whenever you come to do something good, the shaitan wants to deter you from that process. And there is no greater uh, good in anything that you will read or study than the book and the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one will tell you about Allah better than Allah will tell you about himself. And no one will tell you about life better than the one who destined life and created it for us and allowed us uh, a place and a time to exist in it. And therefore the Quran is a spiritual connection. It's not a book that you know, you've know you read from cover to cover and therefore I've read it and I can pass it on and return it to the library. But it's a book that every time you look into it, wallahi, every time you look into every single verse of the Quran, you will learn something new if you deliberate over it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُوا Quran أَمْ عَلَىٰ خُلُوبٍ أَخْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder over, think about, uh, study the Quran, or are their hearts locked away, put away, in a place that doesn't access um, the Quran. Allah also describes, uh, the Prophet ﷺ also describes extremists and people who are of the Zahir. They just take the apparent wordings 
uh, that there are people who recite the Quran with their tongues, but it wala yatajawazu hanajirahum. But it doesn't descend through their throat. It doesn't come down and touch their heart. And therefore, anytime you see someone with an inflexibility and a lack of approach in, in their humanity, then you automatically know that the Quran has not touched their heart. And even if it's on their tongues, even if they have memorized it, even if they have kept it in their mind and memorized letters of it and words of it and sounds of it, even if they're the most melodious in its recitation, the Quran hasn't changed their heart and made them better people. We begin, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem. We seek refuge with Allah from the accursed shaitan. Bismillahir Rahman Ar-Rahim. And because we're beginning a new chapter of the Quran, we begin with the Basmala. Now, the Basmala, Bismillahir Rahman Ar-Rahim, is a part of Surah Al Fatiha. So it must be recited with Al Fatiha, uh, uh, recited with Al Fatiha. And it should be recited at the opening of every chapter, although it is not part of that chapter. The only other chapter where Al-Basmala uh, Al is included is in Surah Al-Naml. May Allah give us an opportunity to talk about that surah and make a daily tafsir of it, where Allah says, إِنَّهُ مِن سُلَيْمَانِ وَإِنَّهُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ But we, it is the tradition of the people of uh, scholars uh, to follow the methodology of the reciters of the Quran and Hafs ibn Asim, the recitation that we're using in our uh, in our reading, it begins the chapters with the basmala outside the, the the recitation of the actual surah, and it's not imprinted in the surah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim. And these three uh, 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 letters are from Huruf al Hija. These are three separate letters. It's not one word. And this is from the I'jaz, from the immutability of the Quran, that Allah is pointing to our attention. That from these letters, this Quran is being delivered to you. This is a recitation that's being recited from a language that is being um, that has been chosen. And therefore, the language of the Qur'an is Arabic. And whatever we mention in terms of translation is what I or the translators have thought they understood of the meaning of the Qur'an, which is Qur'an and Arabi, an Arabic Qur'an that is unchanging in that capacity. One of the things you also come to notice is that Alif Lam Mim, that it doesn't have harakat and it doesn't have uh, vowelization. So, um, although each letter in the Arabic language has an ism, letters have a name or a sound. So, in fact, when you say alif, you don't really say alif, you say alifun, lamun, mimun. But you don't, you know, if you were to give that to, uh, you know, a Christian Arab and you say alif, lam, mim, they would say alam, or they would say alifun, lamun, mimun. But when we recite it, we recite in a particular way and we elongate certain letters. Who taught us this? Alif Lam Mim. Who's the one who uh, authorized this for us, ordained this for us? It is the Prophet Sallallahu And therefore the Quran for us is not just a script, but it is the vowelization and the recitation according to the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu So your aim when you recite the Quran is to use the rulings of Tajweed. Not because it's Tajweed, but because Tajweed helps you sound not make the same melody, but sound the way the Prophet sounded the Qur'an. So you won't have the same tone as other people, but you will sound the letters the way the Prophet sounded them. And therefore, when you study the Qur'an, you can't just study it alif, lam, mim and recite it in that way. It must be alif, lam, mim, Because that tajweed is divinely ordained upon you by Allah through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And therefore my mission and your mission, uh, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, is that when we recite the Quran, to try to recite it as best and as near as possible to the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited it. That's a monumentous task and that's the aim that you and I should have in our readings of the Quran. The second thing we come to note about this very first ayah, Alif Lam Mim, is that these separate verses, they don't have uh, a particular meaning. Now there are lots of theories and many of the Imams of Tafsir have written, you know, uh, these letters, if you coin them up, they make one word or these are, uh, the, the beginning uh, is, is one, the first, the letter Alif, it's the beginning of the word Allah or, you know, Allahu A'lam. 
And the Prophet ﷺ never, there's no authentic hadith where he mentioned what these letters mean. Some of the Sahaba did attribute some, some meanings to them, but there is no consensus, no agreement amongst the Sahaba as to what they mean, and therefore we don't attribute a meaning to them. And we say, ilmuha Allah, and that is more preferable, because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who uh, these words and, and, and this uh, Qur'an belongs to. And the Qur'an is defined as kalamullah. The direct words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Alif Lam Mim, Allah is the only one who knows their meaning. There are people who have made speculations and it's best to abstain from those speculations and not to attribute a particular reasoning for each and every one of those letters. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Uh, this, the, the last thing that I would like to say about uh, you know, Alif Lam Mim is that this isn't the only chapter that begins with this. Surah Al-Baqarah also begins with this uh, uh, statement, Alif Lam and Mim. Uh, and other chapters, and there's Alif Lam Mim Sad in Surah Al Araf, and so on. And this is one of the most used uh, 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 letters in Huruf al Hijat to begin a surah Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim Sad, Alif Lam Mim Ra, uh, and there's other places where it's Alif Lam Mim Surah uh, Al Baqarah, or Surah Ali Imran, and others in the Quran. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that meaning. But it is to show you and I that from these very simple letters, such a magnificent text that stands timeless for mankind's approach and usability to achieving righteousness and a complete way of life with their creator, their maker subhanahu wa ta'ala, is achieved. The next thing that I, uh, and the final thing that I say to you is, uh, for us, we don't believe um, in the Quran that its message is intact. No, we believe that its letters, not just its letters, but its sound is intact. So for example, if you were to speak to a biblical scholar, they will tell you, no, we know without a fact, without a doubt, that the Bible has been changed and there has been alterations and there has been translations. And we can tell, you know, this version of the Bible and this book and this book, who copied from whom and, and where, where these mistranslations went. Um, so for us, we don't look at the Bible as being, uh, we don't look at the Quran as being similar to the Bible in that sense. The biblical scholar will tell you, although the, the actual uh, uh, letters aren't as precise as we think to be from the word of God or narrated through the word of God, we believe that the message on a whole is consistent with what God wants. That isn't how we approach the Quran. We approach the Quran that every letter of the Quran, Alif, Lam, Mim, was divinely ordained by Allah and hasn't changed. And that is one of the blessings of the Qur'an. It's one of the ways that Allah shows that the Qur'an hasn't been tampered with. Because one of the first things people would say is, why are you putting these random letters? Just make a word. Or if there's no word, just begin. Tilka ayatul kitab al-hakim. Just begin with a proper sentence. Why would you even just have kaf ha ya ain It makes no sense. Why would you do that? But that is purposeful for Allah to show that not even a letter will be changed, even if you don't think it has meaning, and even if I haven't disclosed to you what the inner meaning of it is. And finally, Allah says, مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخْرَ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ Some of the things in the Qur'an are very self-evident. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Say, He is Allah, the one, the only. Nothing is like Him. Uh, you know, لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ He hasn't begotten, wasn't begotten. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ Nothing is like Him. كُفْوًا أَحَدٌ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَانَ Very easy to understand. But there are other verses in the Qur'an that are mutashabih, that are ambiguous, that only the learned are able to access their meaning. And from them, therefore, you see these words of speculation that have been said about letters such as Alif Lam Mim, Kaf Ha Ayim Sad, Ta Seen, Ta Seen Mim, Alif Lam Ra, and so on. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to complete the journey of our daily tafsir of Surah Luqman as we had an opportunity to complete uh, Surah Al-Mulk. You can always go back uh, to the playlist. I've created a playlist in my video section in Facebook where you can listen to all of the daily tafsir of Surah Al-Mulk. They're only 10, 15 minutes at a time, uh, 10 minutes at a time. Same with Surah Luqman. I'll try not to go too long uh, or too much into it, even though there's so much to be said. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in a benefit. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ وَزِدْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا وَنَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته hope to see you again tomorrow باذن الله تعالى around this time